This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. First batter in the top of the fourth for BYU reaches on an error by the second baseman. The grounder from Cooper Vest not handled cleanly by Dawson Brigman and Vest reaches. Russell Grant has just pitched his 42nd offering and BYU's up at 91 pitches through three innings. Santa Clara was at 40 through three innings. And that's high to right and will be caught by the right fielder moving to his right. It'll send Cooper Vest back to first base. So Mitch McIntyre flies out to right field. One gone now in the top of the fourth. So of the ten batters retired for BYU, five have been via the strikeout. Yeah, well, Grant came into this game, what, 30 strikeouts in, I think, 22 and a third innings pitched. He's a guy who will strike guys out, but you have to stay off his high fastball. That's the key. Yeah, averaging 1.36 Ks per innings pitched as Andrew Pintar, BYU's second baseman, digs in with one out here in the top of the fourth, and the Broncos leading BYU 11 to nothing. Four in the second, seven in the third. 11 runs on 10 hits. BYU no runs on one hit. The Cougs have two errors as that's ball two. The Broncos' lone error in the game came just moments ago leading off this inning on the fielding error from Dawson Brigman, his fourth fielding error of the season. Yeah, and it's just been a bad day for the Coug pitching staff. They Pintar rips it just foul, just foul down the third base line. I thought it might have been right on the paint. but Yeah, Coach Littlewood's reaction was like, oh, man, that was close. Just one of those uh, one of those days where you, you hit a ball like that and it's, what, maybe an inch or two foul? Andrew Pintar had his four-game hit streak ended yesterday, went 0 for 4. Does lead the Cougars in runs and bases on balls. 2-1 and one with one out here facing Pintar as Russell Grant, the lefty ace, puts it in the dirt. Collected there by his catcher, Tony Boetto, kept it in front of him. Boetto has scored twice today, single and a double, and another single. He went for second, hit twice in the third inning. So singles and a double in his three at-bats. As that's fouled back and crashes off the roof for a full count with one out here in the top of the fourth. 11 nothing. Santa Clara leading BYU. We're at the point, Greg, where you're down 11 nothing in the fourth inning. There's no pressure offensively anymore. The game's gotten out of hand. Just go up there and compete and keep fighting. Pintar lashes one to left. Left fielder going back and sees it go over the wall for the Cougars' first home run and first runs of this day. A two-run shot for Andrew Pintar on cue, Tucky. He said, yes. just go out and have just, a cut, and yeah. he gave it a cut and exactly. gave it a ride to left field. Yeah, got a full count fastball, and I'm glad they called his double foul because then he's able to hit a two-run home run. Nice swing by Andrew Pintar right there. So Andrew Pintar with BYU's first runs of the day on the hit number two on the day, and that's a Utah Community Credit Union home run. Brought to you by UCCU, where getting a mortgage is seriously fast and super easy. Just fill out an easy application right on your phone or computer. Learn more at uccu.com slash seriously fast. A UCCU home run brings the score to 11-2 here in the top of the fourth. Andrew Pintar, the home run to left. Joshua Cowden lofts it to left, but short left running in the left fielder. O'Hara makes the catch, Michael O'Hara. Makes it two outs here in the top of the fourth, and the base is empty for Jacob Wilk, BYU's designated hitter. So the Cougs have a couple of flyouts, sandwiching a two-run home run from Andrew Pintar. Cooper Vest reached on an E4, and he was the one brought home by the Pintar blast to left. Well, that's what the Broncos in this series have done a good job of is when we've, when we've had an error defensively, they made us pay with a big hit. They finally had an error, and we, we made them pay. Two quick balls from Russell Grant. The homer from Andrew, his second of the year, giving him 11 RBIs on the year, and that's tied for second with the current batter, Jacob Wilk. Jacob watches that inside for ball three. Jacob is uh, two for his last 16 at the plate. Was 0 for 4 yesterday. Grounded out in the second inning here today. And now gets a take count at 3-0 and with two out. That's strike one. Top of the zone for a 3-1 count and two gone here in the top.
top of the fourth. BYU's gotten two across their first runs of this series. Before that home run, they'd been outscored 16 to nothing in the series by Santa Clara. That's a four-pitch walk, uh, five-pitch walk. Oh, they called strike on that. I thought he was going, right? Yeah, it was outside. <laughs> so they're going to make it so it goes to a three and two count. The count should be full then, right? Yeah, it's, um, it's full. Scoreboard shows two count, and two, but yeah. it should be full count. That's foul tip. Stays in the at-bat, does Jacob. So the scoreboard shows full count two out, it's, or, or shows two and two with two out. It's actually three and two with two out. Bases empty here in the top of the fourth. And the umpire's trying to get the scoreboard operator's attention by waggling the fingers that it's full count. And there he goes. And now the scoreboard operator catches up. Full count, two gone. Again, fouled back to the backstop. Well, and that was ball four, almost the same spot as the 3-1 count, so he had to battle that pitch. And the umpire gets a little wide, and sometimes umpires in these games where there's a big... You know, run differential. Their their zone widens a little bit, but there's a lot of baseball left in this game. Wind's blowing out. Anything can happen. 11-2 our score. That's off speed for ball four. Good so bat right there. Jacob Wilk will take his walk. So Wilk on a base on balls with the bases now with one Cougar aboard. And that's Wilk bringing the right fielder Cole Gamble. Gamble led off the third inning with a single. Stole a base, and then he was stranded as the Cougars went strikeout, strikeout, strikeout to end the third. Cougars hit now in the fourth, and that's high and tight. Ball one. Yeah, you just keep battling right here. Cole was a 2-0 count, and he got a fastball that he lined over second in his first at-bat. That's ball two, high. So 2-0 two with two out. And one on in the top of the fourth in a game the Broncos lead by a score of 11-2. to two. Yeah, be on time here and put together another swing. 3 balls on three pitches from Russell Grant. Most likely be taken right here. Runner on first is Wilk. Gamble. One for one with a single in the last inning. Takes for strike one, three and one, the count. Well, the Cougs looking for their first win this season when allowing 10-plus runs. They're 0-4 when the opponent gets the double digits in runs scored. Broncos are there as they go back-to-back strikes with Grant here off the 3-0 count. So 3-2, and two, full count, two out, one on. 11-2 our score. Broncos lead on 11 runs with 10 hits. BYU two runs on two hits. Runner leaves on the full count with two out, and that's lashed foul. Down the third baseline. It'll bounce off the Cougar dugout and off the high screen. It'll probably stay on the roof of the building that houses the BYU dugout. And again, both the first and third base lines feature high poles with screens all the way to the foul poles. So it's very much an enclosed space unless you really sky one over those screens as the runner takes off again on a full count Good. and a back-to-back walk. Offered to Cole Gamble. So Wilk will go to second as Gamble takes his free pass to first. When you talk about these high poles that are protecting the streets, uh, this is very unique. We have another field in our league, San Francisco, being that it's in that downtown area and the it's homes in neighborhood. and, and neighborhoods. Yeah. They have these poles that go wrap around the whole entire field. They actually have it in right field now that the pitching coach has taken a mound visit. They have it in right field. It's so high, Greg, that you can't hit it over the net. You can. We've seen it done, but they actually have like a yellow line halfway up their net that if you hit it over the yellow line, it's actually a home run. So it's a unique, it's like a big yellow line that then all of a sudden left right center, it'll drop a little bit and then it'll finally get to the wall. So it's a unique place to hit in San Francisco. Like playing baseball in a driving range. Yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> a little top golf action right there is what it look, reminds you of. So Mound Conference featuring head coach Rusty Filter, who coaches out of the dugout. Mike Littlewood, one of those head coaches that puts himself on the field, third base well, box. You, sometimes you, you, know, you see a couple of guys in our league. Um, uh, coach Choate at LMU, he also coaches out of the dugout. Uh, Rusty Filter, was a, he's been a pitching coach his whole career, and so a lot of times you let your, your hitting coach or offensive coach coach third because that's not your expertise. Same thing with uh, Nick Coach Giratano Choke. at uh, San Francisco is also yeah. a coach out of the dugout. So the conference over. 
Hey, you got a chance to, to make this game interesting now that you got back-to-back -back walks after the home run. Find a way to get a big hit here. Brock Watkins is the hitter. And, and Brock has power. We've seen it, right? You've called his home runs this year, you know, against uh, UVU. If if he's to get one to left here, all of a sudden you make this an 11-5 game, and, and they get nervous over there. Ball one. Delivery. Swung on by Brock. He popped it up to center field. Right field was going to wave him off and have to fall to the ground and making the catch. It appeared that Coleman Brigman had it in his sights, but Bowes waved him off and then had to dive a little bit to make the catch. But it's a third out here in the top of the fourth after three and a half. Santa Clara 11, BYU 2. Cooks get two runs on a big hit. The two run shot from Pintar. Cooks down nine after three and a half on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, so back here at Stephen Schott Stadium in Santa Clara, California. First hitter in the bottom of the fourth for Santa Clara is Michael O'Hara. O'Hara having himself a day two for two with two runs scored and three RBI. Two RBI single in the second, an RBI single in the third. He hits now in the fourth with his team leading BYU 11 to 2. Cooper McKeon stays on the hill for BYU. From 1 and 1 to 2 and 1. Three pitches in in this first at bat on the bottom of the fourth. Two balls, one strike, and none out. Here to Michael O'Hara. BYU trying to avoid a third straight loss. Santa Clara playing for a fourth straight, rather, BYU trying to avoid a fourth straight loss. And the Broncos playing for a fourth straight win. As that's inside, goes to 3-1 and one from McKeon, the southpaw McKeon. Third pitcher for BYU, Carter Smith, a righty, began the game. Two complete for Carter. Heaton came in in the third, and he was spelled by McKeon in the third. Righty, righty, lefty for BYU today. Russell Grant's gone all the way for the Broncos. And that's a strike. Goes to full on O'Hara. Don't go get him right here. Go to your best pitch. Down by nine runs. Just put up a two spot. Had a chance to score a few more. You need to put up a zero right here. Reaching on that and fouling it to the screen down the third baseline behind home plate. It was, remember, a 1-2-3 first inning for BYU against Santa Clara. They went ground out, ground out, pop up in the first and then hit around in the second and hit around in the third as they played four and seven respectively. We hit now in the fourth to the Broncos. That's grounded to short. Handled by Brock. Watkins fired a little high, but no problem there for Cooper Vest at first. They get O'Hara for the first out of the fourth inning. So one gone with Matt Jew coming to the plate. Hit by pitch and stranded in the second. Walked and scored in the third. So 0 for... He just hasn't had that bat officially yet with a run scored. Well, they did all their damage in the second with no outs, all their damage in the third with one out. That's popped up to right. Coming in a few steps is the right fielder, Cole Gamble, makes the catch, and two out here in the bottom of the fourth. With two outs, second baseman number four, Dawson. So it was a 1-2-3 first inning. All kinds of trouble in the second and the third. Maybe a 1-2-3 here in the fourth. And again, the Cougars are trailing by nine. Plenty of time to just... Uh, as we said yesterday, chip away. But the chip away yesterday was down 5-0. Yeah. Now you were down 11 nothing. now 11-2. to two. So the comeback has begun for BYU. Cooper McKeon on the hill. That's a grounder to third, handled by Peyton Cole. The fire to first, Nicely and it's a 1-2-3 done. inning. So we are through four complete, no runs, no hits, no errors. 11-2, to two. Santa Clara leading BYU after four on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball. Alongside Tuckett Slade, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Pitching change for Santa Clara for the top of the fifth. Replacing the starter, Russell Grant, who went four complete, is the right-hander Brandon Buckley making his eighth appearance. And he's started five games for the Broncos Leading this year. For BYU, third baseman number 23. So Peyton Cole leads off the fifth for BYU. Cooks down nine. Peyton Cole struck out in the third, hits, uh, hits to lead off the fifth. So the southpaw starter replaced by the righty reliever. And Buckley puts that one in the dirt. 
for ball one. 3.26 ERA in his seven previous appearances. A win-loss record of one and one. Opponents hitting 239 against him. Averaging about a strikeout per inning. 20 Ks in 19 and a third. That's popped up to the shortstop. And one gone here in the fifth. Dico Chea handles that one. So, leadoff hitter, second hitter of this inning is Hunter Swap. And he has struck out in his first two plate appearances, looking and swinging in the first and the third, respectively. Brandon Buckley, the righty out of Tiburon, California. A fifth year senior, 6'2, 210. And again, a former starter this year coming out of the pen. Swat. Finds that one foul into the screen down the left field line. A little out in front of that one. The huge nets there down the left field line saved a, probably a parked car from getting yeah. hit. The wind changing direction a little more cross field from right to left now. As that's getting put in the dirt and skips to the backstop. One and one after the foul ball. A ball that got away from the catcher. None out here. I beg your pardon, one gone here in the top of the fifth. The scoreboard shows zero out. First batter was Cole popping up to short. That's again skipped. So Buckley looking to find his range in his first few pitches. 2-1 the count. BYU battling from down nine, 11-2 the score. Broncos took an 11-0 lead. And at that point, it outscored BYU 16-0 in the series. The Cougs have gotten two back. Looking for a bunch more. And that's piped in. But low for ball three. Yeah, just a little low right there. Good take. 3-1 count. Hey, be on time right here. Put together a good swing. If not, if it's ball four, take your base. We need base runners. Greg Rubel with Tuckett Slade, BYU Baseball Operations Director. Good cut. Center fielder going back and back and to the warning track makes the catch. Near the wall, Coleman Brigman. Hauls it in a long out for BYU. Yeah, and that's a that's a good swing on three and one. Those are the type of swings you want to see someone take. Good play by the center fielder there, and it's just yep. one of the, it's one of those days, Greg, where you know you hit a ball hard and then they make an even better play. Jumping to make the catch on the track is Coleman Brigman. By the way, Coleman Brigman is without a fielding error in his Santa Clara career. Made a nice play in center field. That's outside edge to the third hitter of the inning, the first baseman, Cooper Vest, left-handed hitting Vest. Do you know how many chances he's had? I'm making you work again. It's all right. Hey, this game, we've got a lot of outs left. Had 72 on this year coming into today. That's just for this year, mind you. Yeah. One one coming up to Cooper Vest. Reached on an E4 and scored the Cougars' first run off the two-run shot from Pintar. Mm. Held back for strike two. That's one and two. With two gone here in the top of the fifth. Brandon Buckley, the one-two. That's grounded foul. Just behind home plate. Stays one and two. foul. Back over the roof third base side. So coming into today for his career, following up your Coleman Brigman question, 117 total chances coming into today. That's impressive. Yeah, Athletes shouldn't make a ton of errors, but there's plenty out there that do. But that's uh, usually there's an overthrow or something. But uh, that's pretty impressive. Quick pitch right there. His ball two. Two and two with two out. To the first baseman, Cooper Vest. 
Again, if you want an answer, Tuckett, I'm, I'm going to get it for you. It may not come in a split <laughs> second, hey. but I'll get you the answers you're looking for. When, especially when it comes to stats. I expect that from you. <laughs> I do what I can with the <laughs> top of the head stuff. Some, 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 some stuff requires a little bit of digging. Again, fouled back by Cooper Best. And again, off the roof behind us here. A crash and a roll as the ball drops off the sloped covering behind us. We're covered today by a canopy that uh, kept our equipment from overheating for a second straight day on a sunny day here at Santa Clara. Brandon Buckley delivers on the 2-2 with two out. That's lofted to left field. Left fielder back to the track and makes the catch on the track. That's Michael O'Hara calling it out number three. So a three-up, three-down inning for BYU. Pop up and two flyouts to out to the outfield. And we'll go to the bottom of the fifth. We're halfway through here at Stephen Schott Stadium. Santa Clara 11, BYU 2. No runs, no hits, no errors in the fifth on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, to halfway through here at Stephen Schott Stadium. Bottom of the fifth inning in a game the Broncos lead 11-2. Broncos 11 runs on 10 hits. They have one error. BYU two runs on two hits, two errors. And pitching change for BYU as McKay Johnson enters the game. First hitter in the inning, Coleman Brigman. Lifts it to center. Catch made there by Mitch McIntyre. Pitching change brought to you by PZ Printing. Nothing inspires like print. So the first batter McKay Johnson faces. Flies out. That was Coleman Brigman here in the fifth. Brings up Jason Dicochea. Dicochea with a two-run single in the third. And scored on a home run. And that seven-run third. BYU trailing at 11-2. to two. Jason Dicochea. A couple of ground outs before his two RBI single in the third inning. He hit in the first, the second, and the third. Hits now in the fifth with his team up nine. McKay Johnson, right-hander on the hill. Third righty today for BYU. Right-handed starter Carter Smith went two complete. Didn't get out of the third. Was replaced there by the righty Heaton. Lefty McKeon. And now right-hander Johnson. Fourth pitcher of the day for the Cougs. The Broncos have used two. Russell Grant replaced by Brandon Buckley. Southpaw replaced by right-hander. The rangy Johnson. Out of 1-1. Gets fouled down the right side for one and two. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that they pulled uh, Grant so quickly. I mean, I know he got himself into a little bit of trouble in that uh, fourth inning, but uh, he was throwing really well. And and when you're facing all the left-handers in this lineup, I thought they might try to run him out there for another inning. That's chop foul down the third baseline. So I call McKay Johnson rangy. Do you think that qualifies at 6'6", 205? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a big kid with a powerful arm. Can be anywhere from 94 to 97. Big, powerful, strong righty. The 1 2 with one out. Outside, away from the right handed hitting Dico Chea. McKay Johnson today making his ninth appearance. They've all come out of the pen. Nine innings pitched in his previous eight appearances. So it's spot duty for McCade. 13 strikeouts in those nine innings. And that's a swinging strikeout. And there's the 14th. So Dicochea retired on the frontwards K. It'll bring Number up Jake 70. McNichols. McNichols followed his pop up in the first with a strikeout in the second and a strikeout in the third. This is a guy that you do not want to leave anything o over the plate elevated because he can do damage. Two out, bases empty for McNichols. The pitch low for ball one. McKay Johnson is ERA seven even coming in two today. 0-3 in his previous eight appearances. Batters hitting 290 against him. Jake McNichols sees it cross his chest for ball two. Speaking of the chest, the Broncos have the uh, all blacks with the stylized script. Broncos diagonally across the chest. BYU the Block Cougars across the chest today. 
That's ball two with two gone here. The base is empty in the bottom of the fifth. A flurry of scoring for the Broncos in the second and third innings. Four in the second, seven in the third to go up 11-0. Cougars got two back in the fourth. We're in the bottom of the fifth now. Santa Clara 11, BYU 2. The 3-0, a take you'd think here from Jake. And he sees it come around the thighs for ball one, but now it stays his count. 3-1 here with two gone. Seems like on 3-0, umpires always give the pitcher the benefit. They don't, they? Yeah, yeah they yeah. really do. That's a cut. Goes to full. To the screen. And going to his hey, knees to make the catch before it got to the in. screen. Job, well Cowden. done. Joshua Cowden makes the catch to retire the side for Santa Clara. That was fouled to the screen, and he gave chase and slid to the padding to make the catch on his knees. So it's a three-up, three-down inning for Santa Clara. And we're through five complete. Broncos 11, Cougars 2 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Top of the sixth, first batter for BYU is the number three hitter, Mitch McIntyre. Jersey number six, a ground out and a fly out in his first two at-bats. BYU down nine. Brandon Buckley, relief pitcher for the Broncos, gets Mitch swinging through that second pitch of the at-bat. Yeah, good, healthy hack right there. Mitch hit his last ball really hard to right in the gap that the outfielder went down and caught. BYU's leader in on-base percentage and hits and doubles and triples and total bases and stolen bases. Mitch McIntyre, the center fielder today. Yeah, One for our, three with a walk and a strikeout yesterday. In our short season, COVID season last year, he was struggling. And uh, the challenge to him was, hey, you need to walk more, put together better at-bats. And, boy, has he done that this year. He's done a really good job. The 2-1 from Buckley. Outside edge away from Mitch. Right-handed thrower to left-handed hitter. Mitch McIntyre, 2-2. Base is empty. None out here in the top of the sixth. Cook's down nine after being down 11. Heading into the fourth inning. Swinging strikeout for Mitch. That's the sixth strikeout of BYU batters today. Five swinging and one looking. So they keep calling with number six. Number six just hit. He's yeah. walking to the dugout. Number four, Andrew Pintar, comes to the plate. Pintar with the Cougars' big hit of the day. A two-run shot. The top of the fourth. Home run number two on the year for Andrew. Pitch number one is strike number one. 0-1 oh, one with one gone here in the top of the sixth. Andrew Pintar, BYU's second baseman. The Cougar leader in runs scored. Scored a run on his home run. His 19th run scored of the year to lead BYU. And Andrew's behind in the count. It's 0-2 with Buckley on the hill, the right-handed hurler replacing Russell Grant. 0-2, one gone, top six, sacks empty. That's ripped to yes, left field by, Mitch Mac by Andrew Pintar going back and over the wall for the second time today. The Cougars' second home run of the day. And for Andrew Pintar, it's home runs and back-to-back -back at bats. Yes, it is. He is not getting cheated today. You love to see that. Keep calling him number six because <laughs> it is working so far. <laughs> So Andrew Pintar, home run in the fourth, a, a two-run shot, and a solo shot here in the sixth through Andrew Pintar with a fly out in the second and then homers in the fourth and the sixth. He has all the Cougars' RBIs in an 11-3 game now. So Cougars were down 11. Now the deficit cut to eight. And Joshua Cowden, left-handed hitting catcher, steps in against Brandon Buckley. Just keep chipping away, but it's a little bit bigger chip than yesterday, right? Already offensively, just, I mean, Andrew's done the damage, but it's interesting. Coach moved him into an RBI spot, and what has he done? He's, he's responded. He's, he's yeah. responded to that. It's exactly what you want to see. Given the cleanup assignment today, he's been cleaning up at the plate for sure with back-to-back -back jacks. One and one with one out here in the, in the top of the sixth. One run across so far for BYU. Cougs on the comeback trail. Could never cut into a 5-0 deficit yesterday. That stayed the final. This one's gone from 11-0 to 11-3. As swinging through that pitch is Joshua Cowden for strike two. 
A swinging strikeout for Joshua in the second, a fly out in the fourth. He hits now in the sixth with his team down eight. But the bat's coming alive a little bit. Andrew Pintar's bat certainly lively. Was 0 for 4 yesterday, ended a four-game hit streak, and he's gone 2 for 3 today with three RBIs, two home runs. A multiple home run game for Andrew. Had one homer on the year coming at 2 today and has two in this game. Yeah, great at-bats by Pintar so far. Our our at-bats as a whole have been much better today compared to yesterday. That's the hard thing, Greg, is this year we haven't been able to put together the full phase, three-phase game of pitching, defense, and hitting all together. Even at LMU, in those games that we won when we, when we swept the series there, we, we had some errors in games or we had some pitchers that struggled at times. You know, we had some tough at-bats. We never had the full game of just like, hey, this is our best. We're yet to do that yet, and we're, we're hoping to come sooner than later. Here that last pitch fouled back for 2-2. Two and two. That's outside for 3-2. and two. The count full with one out, and the base is empty here in the top of the sixth. Andrew Pintar with three RBI today. Give him a 12 on the year, and he moves into second place on the Cougars' RBI tally for the year. Cole Gamble leads BYU with 15, and now AP sitting there at 12. 3-2. That's popped up foul behind us and off the roof. Well, and one thing if you offensively, uh, since Coach Littlewood has been here, we've never had to put such a young team on the field altogether. We usually have three to four mainstays that have had some experience in the lineup. A veteran core. Veteran core, and then you have the young guys added. This year, because of the junior college transfers and the young COVID kids, they're all just getting their first years of experience. Joshua Cowden laces that off the clubhouse, off a hop in foul territory down the first baseline. Three and two, the count full with one out. Here in the top of the sixth, BYU's plated a run on the solo shot from Andrew Pintar. Followed a strikeout from Mitch McIntyre to lead off the inning. The real number six, followed by the other number six, mm-hmm. Andrew Pintar. <laughs> and that's lifted to left field. Left fielder comes in a couple of steps, and Michael O'Hara makes that catch for the fly out and out number two. We bring to the plate number 35, Jacob Wilk. So the BYU DH after the Cowden flyout to left, and that's back to uh, back to back flyouts to left for Joshua Cowden. He's 0 for 3 today, strikeout and two flyouts. So one across here in the top of the sixth. In a game, the Cougars trail 11 to 3. Wilk today, ground out and base on ball stranded at second in the fourth. Cougars had back-to-back walks in the fourth in an inning that saw the two-run home run by Andrew Pintar. Yeah, those w- runners were stranded. Yeah, Wilk and Gamble walked, correct? Back-to-back? And yep. And Watkins flied out to right to end the threat. The 0-1. And that's lifted to right. And will drop just outside the baseline down the right field line. Anytime so that, 0 and 2. Anytime that ball heads the right field in foul territory. You keep waiting uh, for it to come back. It does. And, and we saw last inning, I thought that ball was way foul that Cowden caught that came back. And so I just, it always keep, wants to come back. I thought that was going to there. So pitcher's count here for Brandon Buckley ahead of Wilk 0 and 2 with two out. And the base is empty here in the top of the sixth. One run across. The Cougars have their three runs on three hits. The Broncos have their 11 runs on 10 hits, so both teams making the most of their hits today. And he's going to lay off that and watch it go outside away from him. Outside edge for ball one. One and two from Buckley. Jacob Wilk, two for his last 16 at the plate. Without a hit yet in this series, but did reach in his last at-bat in that fourth inning walk. The one and two, and swinging strikeout inning over for BYU. Run, run across, one run on one hit. No errors, no one left on. After five and a half, it is Santa Clara 11, BYU 3 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Bottom of the sixth and a pitching change for BYU. Brought to you by PZ Printing. PZ Printing, nothing inspires like print. Drew Zimmerman, the right-hander, number 24, will take the hill as the Cougars' fifth pitcher of the day. Zimmerman, the 
185 pounds, senior from Lehigh High School. Will make his sixth appearance. They've all come out of the pen. His longest outing is one and two-thirds of an inning in a 12-6 loss at Texas. And the first batter that Zim faces is number 21, Mike Bowes. Bowes with a three-run shot in the fourth. Well, Zim came in third, last beg your night. Pardon, yeah, sorry, you're right. It was third. Zim came in last night and got a quick three up, three down inning. And making this his seventh appearance of the season for Zim. Nine point six four the ERA and just a four and two thirds. More than a strikeout per inning. Batter sitting two sixty three against him. So the O two. Quickly to O'Hara, uh, to Bose, beg your pardon, the right fielder, Mike Bose. Hit by a pitch and scored in the second. He hit twice in the second, and then a three run shot in the third. He hits now in the sixth. That's laced foul down the third baseline, stays 0 2. Bose 10 for his last 17 at the plate, seeing it well. Third in RBI and third in total bases coming in two today on this Santa Clara team, which leads BYU 11-3. to three. All right, And excuse me, liner to the shortstop. I thought Watkins. for sure that was going to get over his head. <laughs> it settles into Brock's glove and one gone here in the bottom of the sixth. BYU down eight and on the comeback trail. The line out from Bose to Brock Watkins. We'll bring up Tony Boetto. Boeto, single in the second, single, a double in the uh, third, and a single in the third as he hit a round in the third inning. So three for three with a couple of runs for Boeto today. He was 0 for 3 yesterday and 3 for 3 one day later. Second leading hitter in average on this team. And that was coming into the day. He was the second on this Santa Clara squad. His average, though, is up to uh, 339, which makes him the leader for the time being. It's two strikes and a foul back to the screen. One and two, one out. Broncos hit around twice today in the second and the third innings, which they placed plated 11. Chopper to the pitcher. Zim handles and fires to first. Two outs. Nicely done, Zim. Now batting designated hitter number 11, Heyman Lance. That will go as a 1-3. The chopper in front of the plate. Well handled by Zim and two up, two down. So the Cougs had a uh, three up, three down fifth, looking to Turn the trick here in the sixth as well. And really, it's, it's they did it in the fourth as well. So three up, three down in the first and the fourth and the fifth. Maybe the sixth, but those second and third innings, just where everything went sideways. Yeah, ten hits in those just two innings. The extremes as, as the Broncos hit around twice and then go three up, three down in every other inning. Yeah, I mean, just there was two walks in there. There was a couple of errors, two hit Batmans, and then ten hits, and that was what happens. So 2-0. and oh, That's lifted to left by Lance. Dealing with the wind and making the grab is nice Hunter Swap. Sam. Good job. So it's a three-up, three-down, sixth <laughs> inning, and that's three consecutive innings in which the Cougars have gotten the Broncos to go three-up, three-down. We'll see a pitching change for the Broncos after this as we go to the top of the seventh after six complete. Following in no runs, no hits, no errors, bottom of the sixth. It's the Broncos 11 and BYU 3 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.